One thing you want to look for in some of these audio TV pawn shops is that they collect older gear. There's some old 70s PA uh, trainers. It's something that's got a really cool sound that just doesn't create it anymore. Plus, if you ever want to get into reamping, you can come buy some PA speakers or a subwoofer and really try to reamp drums or things of that nature or running an iPad into the subwoofer and playing bass on it and putting a mic on it or a DI situation on the back end of it and you could get something pretty killer. These little small amps normally are a pretty good buy because they're anywhere in between 30 and 60 or 70 bucks and you can turn them up as loud as you can and try to kill them to get that all those juicy overtones that are typically not controlled. So one other thing to look for is these older um, tuners and Sometimes these older tuners from the 70s and early 80s have effects units that come with it. They want to reverb them out or something. Or sound field processors like this. So you can split out stereo and maybe get some kind of cool thing going on. A really cool way to get 8-bit sounds is just go buy a Game Boy, like the original, for like 50 bucks. And then you can buy a couple different games and uh, plug an 8th inch jack into your iPad or to an interface or whatever you have. Tascam zoom and um, just record as you're playing and then be able to pull it in somewhere you can sample that's a really cool way to kind of get more of an authentic 8-bit sound here's a great example of a mic pre you can pick up it won't be an interface for your iPad or your computer but you get four in and one out so if you wanted to track drums or put four mics on a guitar cab or multiple guitar cabs this could be a great little mixer for 80 bucks there's a guy in Jamaica named Lee Scratch Perry, he's very popular and known for uh, his performance mixing. And a big thing about Jamaica and Germany at that time, Connie Plank in Germany, is they were collecting stuff like this because there was no other means of recording gear, like especially in Jamaica, there wasn't all, any kind of high quality recording gear. If it was, it was very uh, sectioned off to maybe a radio station or something like that. So they found uh, tuners that dial in AM, FM, and you know, Lee Scratch Perry would, would figure out, or King Tubby would figure out a way to turn into a guitar amp or a guitar head. So that option is always open when, if you don't have anything and you don't want to go to Guitar Center or Long and McQuaid's and spend a bunch of money on an amp, you can come into a place like this and use this type of audio gear to get a sound and to get your rig running. Here you go, DBX for 70 bucks. This is typically used with tape machines. So it's a filtering system to how to kill the hiss on tape. This might actually be an EQ for you running sound through it. You have a, another mixer up here for a couple hundred bucks, which is a lot. It might be even one eighth on the back. But looking through this kind of stuff, you really can see some cool things. The price right now is 230. You can pretty much buy that brand new at Guitar Center or something like that for the same price. So being aware of your prices on things is going to be a big help when you're shopping in pawn shops and more unorthodox places to find electronic gear. I've never actually seen this one before, so I'd like to go home and research it. But it's probably going to do the same thing that most delay pedals do. It's obviously digitally based. There's probably an IC chip in there. So it's gonna have that sound. And when you're buying pedals, you gotta be aware of is solid state and, and is it hand wound or is there IC chips and is it digitally encoding uh, or taking the, the sound and turning it into binary code and then kicking it back out. That's the kind of stuff you have to think about if you wanna change your sound that way. Okay, thank you. You, you probably could go online right now and research and probably see it for 20 or 30 bucks on eBay or something like that. And the ethics of the pawn shop, you, you don't really know. You, you don't know if they're buying at quality. You know, they could be a cool facility and giving you 50% of what it's worth. The whole pawn shop thing is that you have some pawn shops that are on the verge of being like an authentic real store that sells antiques. The one we were just in is trying to become more of that type of shop versus just a pawn shop. And then you have pawn shops like these that pretty much just deal in anything and any way they can get a deal on something and resell it, they'll do it. This is what I would consider probably a mid-level pawn shop. They definitely go farther down the scale 
as far as um, quality and what they're actually ethically buying and putting out. Those are the ones I typically go to look for, for gear that I can maybe make some bucks off of or not. The final DAW that I use quite a bit, and I use it strictly for linear recording. I don't even want to edit on it. I just want to track it and then give it a little spice and then bounce it out is uh, multi-track and studio track. It's got big knobs.